Greetings to you. My name is Kerry Enright and I'm one of the ministers of Knox Presbyterian Church in Dunedin, New Zealand. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent and uh, not long now to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with all the celebrations that they involve. I'm at home recording this and in front of our Christmas tree and given the theme of the service it seemed appropriate that prominent in the tree is uh, a representation of an angel, something about which I wish to speak during this service. This is a time of uh, prayer and reading and reflection that we offer as a ministry of Knox Church uh, to anyone who might be interested. So welcome to you, now my Hare Mai. I want to begin with some words from Joy Cowley, one of her poems. My soul sings in gratitude. I'm dancing in the mystery of God. The light of the Holy One is within me, and I am blessed, so truly blessed. This goes deeper than human thinking. I am filled with awe at love whose only condition is to be received. The gift is not for the proud, for they have no room for it. The strong and self-sufficient ones don't have this awareness. But those who know their emptiness can rejoice in love's fullness. It's the love that we are made for, the reason for our being. It fills our inmost heart space and brings to birth in us the Holy One. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of eternity, creator of the cosmos, in space and time, sharing the evolution of things seen and unseen, we wait on the birth that comes from beyond. In the body of Mary and her life courageously offered. In a culture of frantic busyness, in a world of empty fullness, we seek a place of prayer and stillness, a posture of trust and adoration. With feet of clay and minds befuddled, we look to you, eternal lover, as we make our way to the place of birth and rebirth, to the place where the tottering earth finds its axis, where time pauses creation is silenced, wisdom bows down, and pride is vacuumed away. Bring us, we pray, this day into the conversation of Gabriel and Mary, that we, in all our compromised living, might find the confidence to say yes to you and to your way, risking our lives for the sake of creation, for the love of creation. In Christ we pray. Amen. Now I want to read now some passages from the Scriptures, first from Samuel and then from the Gospel of Luke. First from Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 to 11 and verse 16. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? 
whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a, pra a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. And then from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, from verse 26 to verse 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God for these readings from the Bible. May God grant us understanding of them, that we may live the way of God in our day. In Christ. Amen. It's called the Annunciation. The angel and the girl are met. Earth was the only meeting place, for the embodied never yet travelled beyond the shore of space. The eternal spirits and freedom go. See, they have come together, see. While the destroying minutes flow, each reflects the other's face, till heaven in hers and earth in his shine steady there. He's come to her from far beyond the farthest star, feathered through time. Immediacy of strangest strangeness is the bliss that from their limbs all movement takes. Yet the increasing rapture brings so great a wonder that it makes each feather tremble on his wings. Outside the window, footsteps fall into the ordinary day, and with the sun along the wall pursue their unreturning way. 
sounds perpetual round about, rolls its numbered octaves out, and hoarsely grinds its battered tune. But through the endless afternoon, these neither speak nor movement make, but stare into their deepening trance, as if their gaze would never break. Edwin Muir's The Annunciation Last Sunday morning in worship there were angels everywhere, some with halos and wings, some without. We sang about angels, we heard about angels, and all this angel stuff got me thinking. Often in worship my imagination goes into overload with the multiplicity of images, and I work hard to connect those images, like the image of angel, with the concreteness of my everyday living. Worship is one of those times when we range free in our minds, because, frankly, not everything in worship holds our attention. We wander off, and I think we're meant to wander off. That is part of what it means to pray in worship. The wandering off, at least for me, helps me connect what I hear with what I live. Well, last Sunday all the talk of angels took me to a memory of just a few weeks ago. I was standing in a park behind the church looking across the road, and there was a person sitting on the footpath their back against the wall of one of the shops. They seemed to be in some kind of need. People were walking past them, and then a person came along, and they bent down, and then they knelt down, and then they sat down. And the two of them became involved in a conversation, a long conversation, I noticed. Now, when I thought of angels last Sunday, my imagination immediately took me to that scene just a few weeks ago. A person carefully attending to another person, overlooked by others, sitting on a footpath. And then I began to wonder where else I've seen that happen. It took me a while to think, but then I thought of a time when, or times when people helped me enter into another person's world, and they did so respectfully. I thought of a time I sat outside a house in the north of Sri Lanka as a father told me of his son left, who left the home weeks before to make contact with what we called people smugglers, to whom he had paid precious money in order to leave illegally in the night to travel on a rickety boat thousands of kilometres in the hope of reaching Australia. It was a truth I heard only because the local church people there had earned the trust of a man bound by desperation. And I thought of people who had been angels to me, who bent down to me sometimes to surprise me with the truth. When our peculiar gifts are affirmed, when people don't try to fit us into a box of narrow normality, diversity becomes liberating for everyone. So that's what I was thinking about last Sunday during worship as I wandered off. And so it brings us to today, to the Annunciation, the interaction between Gabriel and Mary. I looked up some art to do with the Annunciation and I want to offer it now. The first, I think, shows something of the ordinariness of the angel. I like this angel with lumpy knees. And the next portrayal shows something of the awkwardness 
of the conversation. I hope you can see it. There's a young woman cowering on her bed in her room with a degree of fear. Gabriel standing beside her. And I like this piece as well. Let me bring it closer. This is a piece of art by Fra Angelico, a Dominican. It's a private, hushed conversation, an intimate encounter. They're inclined towards each other, sharing confidences. The winged Gabriel, a messenger of God, appears to bow to Mary while she sits on what looks like a milking stool. The angel is set lower than Mary, coming to her respectfully, fearfully even, each feather trembling perhaps. And much more straightforward is this. the angel alongside, the Holy Spirit in view, an honest conversation. Frederick Beekner, the Presbyterian minister turned author, writing of Gabriel. She struck the angel Gabriel as hardly old enough to have a child at all, let alone this child, but he'd been entrusted with a message to give her, and he gave it. He told her what the child was to be named, and who he was to be, and something about the mystery that was to come upon her. You mustn't be afraid, Mary, he said. As he said it, he only hoped she wouldn't notice that beneath the great golden wings, he himself was trembling with fear to think that the whole future of creation hung now on the answer of a girl. I wonder if you've been part of conversations like that. When a call came, an invitation, when so someone saw you as somehow favoured, somehow blessed, and you sensed the risks that would come if you said yes, how your life would change. In ordinary ways, small ways, big ways, Gabriel's invite us to that yes, often altering what seemed fixed and predictable. It's significant that in Luke's account, Mary speaks. She talks back because it's not an easy yes, not a cosy yes, not a cheap yes, which is hardly surprising given the social and physical strain that would come for a poor pregnant girl in ancient Palestine. Imagine Mary's pregnant body continuing with the rhythms of a fishing community, cleaning, slicing, preparing. Imagine the strain on her back as she carried water from the well. Imagine the swelling of her feet as she planted and gathered the harvest during the later stages of pregnancy. Imagine the sweat dripping from her brow as she gathered grain and kneaded it for the evening meal. And then the social distancing and the ridicule for an unwed pregnancy, the shame and the self-doubt. No, Gabriel had to ensure that the choice was genuine, that the choice was free that Mary wasn't being trapped into saying yes. The invitation had to be genuine. Let me finish with a poem by Denise Levotov. We know the scene, the room variously furnished, almost always a lectern, a book, always the tall lily, 
arrived on solemn jet grandeur of great wings the angelic ambassador standing or hovering whom she acknowledges a guest but we're told of meek obedience no one mentions courage the engendering spirit didn't enter her without consent god waited she was free to accept or to fr to refuse choice integral to humanness aren't there annunciations of one sort or another in most lives some unwillingly undertake great destinies and act them in sullen pride uncomprehending more often those moments when roads of light and storm open from darkness in a man or woman are turned away from in dread in a wave of weakness in despair and with relief ordinary lives continue god does not smite them but the gate closes the pathway vanishes she had been a child who played ate slept like any other child but unlike others wept only for pity laughed in joy not triumph compassion and intelligence infused in her indivisible called to a destiny more momentous than any in all of time she did not quail only asked a simple how can this be and gravely courteously took to heart the angel's reply the astounding ministry she was offered to bear in her womb infinite weight and lightness to carry in hidden finite inwardness nine months of eternity to contain in slender vase of being the sum of power in narrow flesh the sum of light then bring to birth push out into air a man-child needing like any other milk and love but who was god this was the moment no one speaks of when she could still refuse a breath unbreathed spirit suspended waiting she did not cry i cannot i am not worthy nor i have not the strength she did not submit with gritted teeth raging coerced bravest of all humans consent illumined her the room filled with its light the lily glowed in it and the iridescent wings consent courage unparalleled opened her utterly remarkable for you and for me Gabriel's assuring us that we are blessed and favored for service for giving to others for sharing the love in this time this special time this waiting time peace be with you may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you kitao kitato katoa the atophile to tato diki o ihu kuraiti meti aroha o te atua meti fifinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu Okay, okay. Amen. Go and pay.